over. Could be run out. David Gower is away commentating on the cricket in South Africa this week. We were hoping to have Steve Davis instead, but he said he wouldn't be able to make it if he got past the first round of the UK Championship in Bournemouth. <laughs> so please welcome Steve Davis. <laughs> With Steve and Jonathan is a comedian who started out selling poems for 10p each, then moved on to singing in bars for 50p a time. Tonight, though, he brings his career earnings to £2.73. <laughs> Arthur Smith. With Gary and Rory is Britain's World Championship silver medalist at the 10,000 metres, who says she drinks 12 litres of water before every race. It's not dehydration, it's motivation. The nearest toilet's at the finish line. <laughs> Paul Radcliffe. <laughs> we start the show with our goal celebrations round. Gary, Rory and Paula, it's Premiership action for you. We take you back to October when Chelsea took on a previously unbeaten Manchester United and stuck five past them. Graham Masso, simple pass between two. Look at the space here for Jody Morris who hits it straight through Massimo Taibi. It's 5-0. Um, and they scored five goals. Yeah. Do you think something does five? Trombone mm -hmm. thing. Is there a song? Is there a song with? Yeah, seventy-six trombones, Gary. You only <laughs> seventy-one. <laughs> <laughs> May I take advantage of the silence that Gary so cleverly created there? <laughs> Just point out, was he possibly playing the national anthem because he's like the only English player left at Chelsea? <laughs> no. He's doing something um, which I've seen before. I think in one of your videos, actually, Jonathan. <laughs> Yeah. I've asked you for German trombone boys back on several occasions. <laughs> Did he promise someone he'd do it? Yes. Yeah. Just like a friend or someone that he'd met. Very good. I'll give you a hey, point wow. for that. Yes, Four indeed. Well done, Paula. Very good. Here is Jody Morris with the explanation. Well, basically, I was on holiday in Cyprus in the summer with a few of the boys in it, and my mate Spoonie, who's a DJ, was playing out there and. Uh, he used to do it every time a song came on or whatever, and he said to the boys, I want to see the trumpet when you get back, if any of you score. He's in the fast show as well. It's brilliant! <laughs> it's brilliant! <laughs> yeah, so Jody Morris promised he'd give a blast on his trumpet the next time he scored. Obviously a little trumpet trombone confusion there, but coming from Chelsea, I suppose English isn't his strong point. <laughs> Jody Morris doesn't play in every match because of Chelsea boss Gianluca Vialli's famous rotation system. A third of the time, he's got Jody Morris out on the field. The second third, it's Dennis Wise. And the other third, he plants wheat and winter barley. <laughs> Jody Morris began his Chelsea career as the boy who cleaned Dennis Wise's boots. Scraping the mud off was easy, but it was a bugger getting the cabbie's teeth out of the toe caps. <laughs> Actually, before we go any further, it's going to be now, Jonathan. I think we've got him. Do you recognise this, Gary? At all? This is your mobile phone, isn't it? Gary's mobile phone. It is. Uh -huh. I've so. put him in my memory under big ears, and I'm just <laughs> Listen this. <laughs> How sad is that? <laughs> yeah, I <can> turn it off. <laughs> you know what? Now, now I've got the number, I'm going to call you up at four in the morning and pretend I'm Vinny Jones. <laughs> at least I get phone calls. <laughs> yeah, but 0800 numbers don't count. <laughs> Oh, they call you, do they? <laughs> yeah, such a big account. <laughs> yeah. well, you've got to make that money anyway. <laughs> right, Steve, Jonathan and Arthur, it's first division action for you. Here is Wolves' Addy Akinbai sticking one in at Barnsley. And this is Taylor and Akinbai pulls away and completes a really nice move. Wolves lead by two to nothing. And Akinbai is really an all-round sportsman. So, Steve's team, what did all that mean? Well, he's obviously very excited there. I mean, like, probably he may have got a bit overexcited, got a semi on, something like that, and all of a sudden, obviously with the, um, 
with the celebrations to follow. Sorry, Steve, what would you know about having a semi on? <laughs> Is that what happens to you, Steve, when you pot a black? A you semi. Get a semi on. Do you, do you have to you have to nominate which hole you're gonna go for when you <laughs> Baby wasn't actually doing a celebration. What had happened, there was a little bit of Velcro thrown onto the pitch by one of the fans, and he just got <laughs> stuck. <laughs> That's the closest so far. <laughs> no water. <laughs> Tragic. Black athletes traditionally don't do terribly well at swimming. Right. And there's your answer. <laughs> Perhaps um, he was being ribbed about this swimming by his teammate. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Perhaps somewhere along the line, he said, if I score a goal, I'll swim from here to there in wherever he lives. Mm -hmm. You know, something. Or, or perhaps not. I'm not boring, am I? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to give you the three points because Steve was right on, this, on the oh, swimming well and the uh, teammates taking the mickey out of him. It is because his Wolves teammate, Steve Sedgley, had accused Addy Akinbai of being unable to swim. Here is Addy. Steve Sedgley thought I couldn't swim, um, so he put me a couple of handbands and a swimming hat, which was a pink one. <laughs> Uh, and I thought when I scored a goal, I'm going to do the swimming, at least on grass anyway. But I know I can swim because I've got the bronze medal to prove it. In fact, that bronze swimming medal has pride of place in the Wolves trophy cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves' record defeat was against Man United in 1892 when they lost 10-1. Although it was one all when the 90 minutes were up. <laughs> well, at the end of that round, Steve's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. Yeah, well done. Time now for our second round, and if you've forgotten what that is, Steve, it's the round that happens when you're waiting for the bus home. <laughs> this week, this week it's our sporting bluff round where the teams try to work out which of the other team is telling the truth and which is telling porky pies. Steve's team, your subject is sitting opposite you. It's Paula here. And it's a very, very fast race. And these conditions, well, it's a marvel. They're going so quickly. Sheer guts. Warmy wins. Rectic second, a superb run, a superb run that. That was absolutely brilliant piece of distance running. Now, for years, Paula had to compete in severe pain from her foot until one day she found a miracle cure. But what was it that healed her, Gary's team? Was my foot cured by an African witch doctor? Paula's foot was cured by having a chicken's brain implanted in it. <laughs> Paula's foot was cured by hypnotism. So, Steve's team, was Paula's foot healed by a witch doctor, a chicken's brain, or by hypnosis? I think maybe, you know, the chicken thing is plausible, though, in a way, because, you know, that fa for preparation H is uh, shark's liver oil. I mean, if you've sh ever shoved a shark's liver up your ass, <laughs> then you may well have considered chicken's brains. <laughs> if we got a fox in the room and Paula started running, we'd know. You see, I told you, he's not at all dull. He really isn't. He? <laughs> hypnotism. <laughs> if I hypnotise you, let's see if you feel any better, OK? Uh, you hit, right, so I'm you're going to hypnotise Look me. at my pen. Steve, not you, mate. Don't, you're bad enough already. <laughs> you try and stay with us. <laughs> I am going into a trance. <laughs> I love you, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I'm not with you anymore. <laughs> Oh, my foot, it's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask you a question relevant to this, mm -hmm. which is completely... Well, do, um, do, do female athletes shave, like swimmers shave? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it makes you run faster. It does make you run faster, so you swim well, it. cyclists do it, don't they, and the swimmers do it. And would you, yeah, have any, would you happen to have any Polaroids of that, just to substantiate <laughs> yourself? And to help me come to the correct answer. But looking at that film, you do realise it's short they say about television, isn't it? But it's nice to see winning the silver medal, but it does put pounds on you, doesn't it? <laughs> actually, in real life, Paul is actually quite slim. Look <laughs> <laughs> at that film, what a porker. Dear. I must admit, from I seeing it was that me. film, I was, it, was, it wasn't so much Paul who was knackered as David Coleman. He was, he was. He was. I thought he was about to peg out himself. <laughs> yeah. no, if it was Brian, he was but if, emotionally if, moved by the performance. 
Well, well, you got your performance. <laughs> you thought you didn't see any acting or mime going on. You only saw the last lap. Did you? You lacked them. You lacked them. Why haven't the other match something very similar? It was better acting than you were being hypnotised acting. Well, as you know, I'm classically trained. Um, it did you actually know, cause a bit of confusion because the people in 6th, 7th and 8th or 8th, 9th and 10th got lapped and got confused and stopped and thought they'd come 4th, 5th and 6th and all got disqualified. So hold on, you were saying that some of the athletes thought they'd finished when they hadn't. It's yeah. a pretty basic thing to remember how many times you've to go around the track. Well not if you're running 25 laps though. Have you ever been lapped in a race? I've been lapped indoors but it's only half the track so don't lapped know if it counts. Indoors. Lapped indoors? Yeah, just home. leave it! Just leave it! <laughs> 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 oh, I'm looking forward to the green room tonight. <laughs> it's a brain of a chicken. If you had the brain of a chicken I in front of you, yes. you would probably you'd do something daft like marry Posh Spice or something, wouldn't you? So I don't think you'd do that. <laughs> what do you think, team captain? Am I right, when I first came in, I didn't think Gal was gone. I thought he'd just gone crazy with the hen at the weekend. <laughs> uh, it's chicken brains. You think it's the chicken brains? Yeah, because, uh, yes, it is. That's because... what Gary said. Let's see if you're right. Gary had it right. Paula's foot injury was cured by injecting cells from a chicken's brain. Paula says that the chicken injections have completely cleared up her injury and there's now no pain at all in her left drumstick. <laughs> Paula here did Britain proud in Seville this summer when she won the silver medal in the women's 10,000 metres, narrowly losing out to Geoffrey Archer, or so he claims. <laughs> Paula once had to give a urine sample in front of Sue Barker, although Question of Sport dropped that round in the edit. <laughs> now, Gary's team, your bluff concerns, the addict's addict, Aston Villa's Paul Merson, seen here in action against Newcastle in the days before he was demoted to the reserves. Joe Chim, here's Merson! That's a gem! Uh, Paul Merson recently spent the night in the arms of Alice, Alice, Alex Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. He, he spent the night in the arms of Jody Morris. Oh, no, he didn't. He spent the night in the arms of Ali McCoist. Don't argue. So, did Paul Merson spend a night entwined with Alex Ferguson, Jody Morris, or Ali McCoist? Gary's team. Mm. Was he blowing Jody's trumpet? <laughs> 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 Come on here and lower the tone of this family show. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Jonathan. I once spent the uh, night in the arms of Alex Ferguson, but I hasten to add it was a girl called Alexandra Ferguson. Uh -huh. It was quite similar. There was lots of moaning, and she complained that I finished five minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done a marathon? No. Paula? I have. Yes. No, I know I haven't. He's the only one on this team who's done a marathon. You wouldn't think that, would you? Why not? <laughs> if you're a fat git. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you? I did the 1986. He's still running it. 1986. <laughs> <laughs> Rory, Rory, can I ask you a question? Yes. Did you shave before doing the marathon? <laughs> yeah. I've been all grown back by the time I finished. <laughs> <laughs> May I say on the subject, just for you, Nick? Yes. I once said to the marathon, Yeah? Chocolate and peanuts all over me knob. Thank you. <laughs> We retire to the bar. <laughs> for, younger viewers, for younger viewers, the uh, yeah, yeah. marathon is now called Snickers. Yes. <laughs> Come on then. I think it could be like your joke. Jodie Morris isn't like a girl or something. Who said no. Jodie Morris? I did, but sadly. Let's see. Um, we don't know. Yes, we do. Yes. Steve was the truthful one. Paul Merson admits he recently spent the night with Jodie Morris. Not the Chelsea player, but a lady referred to in The Sun as a busty 23-year-old PR girl. Jodie Morris told The Sun that they romped in bed for an hour and a half, although under the rotation system she was replaced after 45 minutes <laughs> by Dennis Wise. <laughs> a few years ago, Paul Merson enrolled with Alcoholics Anonymous and took the pledge, followed by a swig of Harpic and a line of Ariel. <laughs> At the end of that round, Steve's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. We press on with our excuses round where we lay bare the often inventive reasons some sportsmen give to justify their woeful displays. Gary's team, it's golf's finest fruitcake for you, Jesper Parnovic. Earlier this year at the Lot Lomond International, Sweden's top golfer missed this simple two-foot putt that a crazy golfer would have found easy. 
Oh, oh dear, dear. He's always a little bit eccentric, but what on earth is that he's got up his nose? <laughs> but in time-honoured fashion, there was a good reason. So, Gary's team, what exactly was his excuse? He's got, he's got cotton wool up his nose. Yep. Yeah. Now I thought someone had chopped his tusks off to make chest beef. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your handicap, Gary? <laughs> Five, Arthur. You were supposed to say something amusing like, I'm shit at golf. <laughs> but that would be very predictable. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I think, when he, just before he takes that putt, yeah. he glimpses out of the corner of his eye, uh, projected on a huge jumbotron screen, uh, footage of his wife having threesome sex with Tinky Winky and Dipsy. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Pugwash, Log in the Knob, Timmy Mallet. I'm just saying names now for no reason. <laughs> Why am I going to Timmy Mallet? He, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> he, he turned down Phil 99, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was too smart. <laughs> Come on, answers. We haven't got a. Do you know the answer? <laughs> Well, Why couldn't you have said that at the beginning? Isn't I think I think it was hay fever. He, he claimed us with he had really bad hay fever. That's why right. the cotton went up his nose. His eyes were one. No, it wasn't hay fever. I was just testing you. It was actually he was. He had, had a nose. I can't speech. believe I wanted it to go quicker and I've handed it across to Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> neither of you know. Neither team knows. All right. In fact, the tissues up the nose were irrelevant. The real explanation for Parnovic's poor form is all to do with mathematics. Ah. He was trying to work out, as you do what the difference would be between a length of rope slung around the Earth's surface and a length of rope slung on stakes three feet above the Earth's yeah, surface. Jesper thought they'd be less than 20 feet different, while his caddy thought the answer would be nearer 10,000 feet. And as it turns out, Jesper was right, the difference would be slightly under 19 feet. There was actually a delay between the fourth and fifth holes while Parnovic asked if he could phone a friend. <laughs> So, Steve's team, your excuse concerns Northern Ireland's most famous dribbler, George Best. Here he is, scoring one of the goals that clinched the 1968 no. European Cup final for Manchester United. But although he was guest of honour when United won back the trophy in Barcelona last season, Bestie actually left early and missed the two late goals which won the Cup. What was his excuse, Steve's team? Gary, when you look at that, what do you think? Do you think, wouldn't it have been great to be a great footballer? <laughs> I mean, it's inspiring, isn't it? I think maybe the reason that he left the game early, because he videoed it, didn't want to know the result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did he have a... <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> so I do, you don't want to know, do you? <laughs> it's sort of like you watching Barry Norman. It's exactly like me watching Barry Norman. <laughs> You know that this new invention that they they're bringing loads of things in, what? right? The car. <laughs> <laughs> I actually made a mistake before the show. Seriously, go to Steve and say, Steve, what's the history of snooker? And everyone else ran out the room screaming. God, Steve. No, I'm not telling no, you. No, no, God. God, no. Steve. No, God, it'll be a winner. It'll be a winner. No, go it's on. not going to be, and you know it's not. <laughs> oh, they want him to say it, don't we, boys and girls? <laughs> You know that invention they've got, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, I think it's to do with after dinner speech. I think he must have had to go to an after dinner speech, after dinner slur, something like that. After dinner speech afterwards. No, I think it was that he thought they'd lost and he decided he couldn't bother hanging around anymore. And he had, like, Miss Uruguay or Paraguay or Bosnia or Romania or... Yeah, all right, um, you know some countries, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bratislava. They've all split up. Bratislava. is a city. Yeah. yeah, well, she was a, a smaller girl. <laughs> now, no, the answer is that he was trying to avoid the attention of autograph hunters. According to George Best spokesperson, Phil Hughes, we had to get George out early because there are about 6,000 supporters there trying to get his autograph. So George left five minutes before the end and missed all United's goals. He was doubly unlucky because last week he went to the first day of the first test against South Africa. He arrived five minutes after the start and missed all of England's innings. <laughs> One fan waited three hours after the European Cup final for David Beckham's autograph. Half an hour waiting to see him and then two and a half hours while Beckham tried to remember which way round the D goes. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Steve's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
It's time to get a little bit physical now as we play Field of Sportsmen. Barry and Rory, you're up first this week. Blindfolds on. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, you can start your touching now. He goes straight for the tits every time. <laughs> and you are a tit. Yay! Fantastic. Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? I don't know. It's a very you, short person. It's you, you jugged <laughs> bastard. Oh. Sapper <laughs> roaring. Well, um, it's got metal feet. <laughs> Is it Linford Chris, do you think, Gary? How are we going to find no, out? I don't know. <laughs> Printer. Oh, I know, uh, Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> oh, he's not running anymore, is he? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Jason, 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 Jason Gardner. Jason. Nope. Dwayne Chambers. Correct. Hey. 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 Okay, Steve and Jonathan, if you'd like to take your positions. <laughs> Have you done this before, Steve? No, this is my first time. I'm a bit nervous. I thought you'd enjoy this. It's the highlight of my week, normally. <laughs> <laughs> my advice to all you would be, don't rush it, savour it. <laughs> and, and don't go straight for the arse or the breast when you're obvious. <laughs> Warm them up gently. <laughs> you know, nibble an ear, touch an ankle. <laughs> Cough on them, you know, the things that <laughs> they like. Okay, can we have our second mystery guest, please? Okay, your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> oh, hello. Hey, here we've got a lady. after the show, you know, because I could ruin you for normal men, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, I don't know where to start. This is like the first lady I've had on the show. Wait, well, hold on. Or a friend. What is that? It smells of pine. Is it a shooting stall? Shooting <laughs> 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 I like this bit. Pine. <laughs> Feel good? <laughs> <laughs> You see, she likes it! Yeah. I promise I won't try and take your temperature with my finger or anything like that. I won't see what when you get on. Oh, no. I she's like a pirate. She's like a... That's what she is. Time's running out! She's the British champion pirate. <laughs> yeah. No, too late, too late, too late. It is, in fact, Yvette Baker, the world orienteering champion. Yeah. 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 So, Steve, you've been thinking about this all week, haven't you? You thought, I'll tell you what, I'll get on there, I'll have a good old sniff, that'll work it out. <laughs> it smells of pine. <laughs> that's right, so I think that's I'm used to been. ash. I'm used to ash or maple. Pine through me. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we ever have a pirate on the show anyway? <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, Steve's team have six points and Gary's team have nine. <laughs> We close the show with the name game. The winning team goes first, which at the moment is Gary's team. The Paula, team. could you pass those along to Rory, please? Thank you, Paula. As many names as you can in the next 90 seconds, starting whoa, 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 whoa. now. Uh, Arsenal manager. 
Arsene Wenger. Uh, England cricket captain, obviously doesn't like it in South Africa. Nasser Hussain. Uh, this is a 400 metres runner, her second, second name. Mary. Very good, before Christmas. This is an Aston Villa ex-addict. Um, please oh, play for Arsenal. Oh, yeah, very good. <laughs> Now this is a Romanian 5,000 meter runner Bravo. who used, you see a lot of her mainly oh, her back here. Oh, yeah. oh, um, <laughs> this is an Italian footballer, Christian name Francis in Italian. Francesco. And his second name is like women, you know. Um, <laughs> Rumble, Totti. Oh, for Tacas! Ah. <laughs> Francesco Totti. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, very good. This is, um, the, the first name is, this is a Bangladesh sprinter. Um, the first name is, is really nice, you know. Oh, isn't that? Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, and the second name is like Lovely the same Yorkshire. E. Yeah, very Lovely good. Yeah, that's it. This is a water skier whose name <laughs> is like the bloke, the hero of, um, what's that film, Nightmare on Elm Street with a... Freddy oh. Krueger. Very good. Hey. This yeah. is... <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know... This is the end. You know, um, the first name is, you know, what you call your wife. Not that, Gary. Darling. <laughs> Darling, yeah, and the second name sounds like she's having a good time in bed. She's a bit of a... <laughs> she's never had that. <laughs> Famous painting, something Lisa by Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. Very good indeed. This, <laughs> this is an Israeli manager. So it sounds like an abbreviation of slow motion in Hebrew. <laughs> slow <laughs> Right. Disdainful. 90 seconds, sort of. Starting. And now, one of the greatest footballers in the world, Northern Ireland, mm. likes a bit of a drink. George uh, Best. There you go. All right, uh, snooker player. Um, he's uh, me. Oh, he's me. Oh, no, not you. Obviously not. No. Uh, he he, his dad's in prison. His nickname was uh, the Rocket. Ronnie O'Sullivan. There you go. Okay. Um, we've got uh, this bloke had his autobiography out recently. I read the first chapter. They set himself up beautifully. Missed the second chapter completely. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, if he was a king, he'd be old king. <laughs> okay. If you had a fire, the second name you would burn in the fire. It's a fossil fuel. <laughs> oh. Oh, there you go. All right, okay. His first name rhymes with. No, no. Second name. Se second name is. Uh, he was Frank, Frank, Frank McLean. No, no, no. Where do you get Frank from that? Rhymes with. Oh, well, maybe you could rhyme with anything. You have to say it rhymes with. Name, I could have been saying D, and it could have been his name was B. It was your in words. Shut up. <laughs> If he was Bo and Allo, he would be one of these people. Archer. Archer. Okay, his first Jeffrey name... Jeffrey Archer? He no. <laughs> his first name would be, in America, it's a slang word for a dollar. It's dime. Buddy, oh, no, can no. you spare me? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, second name, if you've got your salt, you need your... If you, pepper. Yeah, and the first name... Short for Dorothy. Dot. Come Dot. on. Dot. Yeah, and a little pepper. bit more. Give me like a cup of at the end of. Dot. Dot. Oh. Gin. All right. Uh, <laughs> this one, second name, if you're in the Scouts, it's like ging gong. Gully, gully, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's team have 10, but this week's winners is Gary's team with 17. <laughs> so our thanks to Gary, Rory and Paula, Steve, Jonathan and Arthur. We're all off to burgle David Gower's house. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over. It is now. Joe Brand voices her thoughts on advertising next here on BBC One.